Hi, it's December the 2nd, it's about 5 degrees outside, so you might be wondering why I've got a fan on next to me. Well, the reason is it's day two of my tech advent calendar, and I wanted to share this with you today. So this is my homemade strobe light. I've got a 12 volt LED uh, here, which is controlled by an Arduino, and I've got a little um, linear potentiometer, which as I twist that, it adjusts the rate at which the LED is flashing. So, the fan blades have actually got letters written on them, but you can't normally see them. If I hold the strobe light up to illuminate the blades as they go round, and now if I twist the dial, what I'm going to try and do is find the rate at which the strobe light flashes um, at the same speed as the blades twist round. So here we go, we can actually kind of make a freeze frame of what's written on the blades as they go round. And I'm hoping you can see that I've got the black letter A written there. Uh, the next blade we've got the blue letter C and here we've got the green letter B. Um, in fact if I just turn the fan off I'll be able to verify that in a second. So this is kind of a, a, a cool way that you could find uh, players have to discover a code written in an escape room for example by adjusting the refresh rate to uh, match and discover some code written on the blades of the fan. So here's how I've got everything wired together. Um, I've got an Arduino Nano here, and here's my potentiometer input. So on one side of the potentiometer, I've got a five volt supply, and on the other side, I've got ground. And then in the middle, I've got that wired to um, A0, one of the analog input pins. And what happens is as you twist the potentiometer, the reading on that middle pin goes between um, the two extremes. So we've got naught on this side and five on this side. And the voltage received in the middle will be received at the analog input pin and we can do an analog read to convert that into a value uh, as to how fast the strobe is going to flash. Uh, so that's that on that side. Now here I've got my LED panel. Now this is a 12 volt panel um, but a nano runs at 5 volt logic. So you can't directly uh, power the LED from the output pin of an Arduino. Instead, we're going to send it through this MOSFET instead. So um, what's happening here is I've got a 12 volt power supply and that's actually powering the Nano as well through the V in input here. And that's going to the LED positive input as well. And then we've got the, uh, the other wire from the LED panel is going to the center pin of the MOSFET. So that is what's called the drain. And on the right hand side, we've got what's called the source that goes to ground on the uh, Nano. And here we've got the gate, which is the, the leftmost pin, and that is going to a digital input. And the way a MOSFET works is that when there is a small voltage applied to the gate pin, so we can do that by writing high to digital pin 3, uh, when a small voltage is applied at that gate there, it allows a current to flow from the source to the drain. So um, the, uh, the current can flow down here back to ground, and so this circuit is complete and we're getting 12 volts supplied to the LED panel, which will make it light up. So the Arduino needs only send a 5 volt output to the gate and then we have 12 volts going between the source and the drain. Uh, the reason for this little resistor here, this is because um, we don't want to leave the gate pin floating. If the gate pin um, you know, was set to an indeterminate value then um, you might have the, the LED flickering. So this is a pull down resistor which uh, while we haven't got this uh, set high, this is going to pull the gate down to zero just to make sure that the gate is definitely closed and it only opens when we send a high value to this signal here. That's it. And here's the Arduino code itself. Um, very simple and straightforward this one. So we define two constants. We've got the uh, A0 pin, that's the analog input that we're going to read the value set on the linear potentiometer. And we've also got the strobe pin that's connected to the gate of the MOSFET and it's going to control power to the LED. Uh, in the setup function we define the strobe pin as an output. Um, we don't need to define the analog input pin as an input and um, that's going to be an input anyway. And then what we do every frame in the loop function, what we do is we take an analog reading 
of the uh, the pin value that is connected to the middle pin of the potentiometer and that's going to give us a value between 0 and 1023 so what we're then going to do is we're going to convert that range of values into a um, kind of a more useful range to, to set the rate of flashing of the strobe and to that we're going to use the map function so we're going to take whatever the, the raw value read from the analog reading up here is the input range for that is between 0 and 1023 and then we're going to convert that into a range between 101 instead um, so I could have written 1 and 100 there I've actually reversed the direction of the mapping as well because um, just the way that the potentiometer twisted it just naturally felt better to me to have it um, increasing the flash rate as I twisted to the right kind of thing so um, that's the reason why I've just listed them the other way around there so uh, we've now got a value between 1 and 100 depending on how far we've twisted that uh, potentiometer wheel round and we'll assign that to refresh rate and then all we simply do is we write a high value to the strobe pin so remember this is going to go to the gate of the MOSFET and that's what's going to allow the 12 volts to uh, flow through the LED panel and we're going to wait for however many seconds with the refresh rate so whatever the value we've calculated here we're going to leave the LED on for that length of time and then we're going to uh, turn it off again and then we're going to wait again and then we're just going to loop through each time each time we're going to be turning it on for a certain amount of time waiting and then turning it off for a certain amount of time and waiting again and that's it